All right, hello everyone. Hello, eighth grade students. Uh, this is going to be the first lesson in a series of videos that I'm going to put together for you. One for each lesson, one for each day, you know, for the most part. And uh, you know that we transitioned away from what we were doing on the iPads, and now we're going to be doing some a uh, little bit of review, a little bit of new stuff. Uh, this should be a little bit of review from sixth grade. We're going to talk today about the sources of non-renewable energy. <clears throat> non-renewable energy uh, is an energy source that can't be replaced once it's used. So the most common forms of non-renewable energy would be a fossil fuel. So uh, coal, oil, and natural gas are your main fossil fuels. They're a form of chemical energy. Or chemical potential energy so when it's burned that potential is released in the form of uh, heat and that heat is used to do something the first type uh, is coal the picture I have on the bottom left here uh, shows a really nice sample of, of coal in particular I think it's called bituminous coal it actually might even be anthracite it has like a nice luster to it. It's really shiny. Uh, and anyway, so coal is mined from the earth, it's pulled out of the earth, and coal comes from prehistoric forests and swamps that were on earth a very, very long time ago. And this is just kind of a quick image here that shows how the coal is formed over time. The first thing that has to happen is, you know, the forest or swamp you know, material dies, you know, the plant material dies, it's deposited onto the floor of the forest. Over very long periods of time, the forest dies, more grows, the forest dies, and those layers of plant material called peat, they kind of pile up on each other. Over time, it is compressed under pressure, and it's heated, and lignite is formed. Even more time, you have another material, subbituminous, and then you have finally have, in that kind of second to last column there, bituminous coal. It's the most common coal. That's what's burned. And under uh, more rare conditions, you can get anthracite. That is very, very high quality coal. Uh, there's not too much anthracite left on Earth. A lot of it's been burned up already, you know, when we first found coal. Uh, so today, we tend to burn the bituminous coal, if not even like subbituminous coal. It's lower quality, but we still can burn it. All right, next uh, next fossil fuel, uh, oil, uh, petroleum. You know, as it's also called, uh, it's a liquid. It's pumped from underneath the ground, and the big difference here is that it comes from ocean organisms. So, more on that later. All right, natural gas. Uh, natural gas and oil are actually found near each other. Uh, in fact, if you look at the picture here, you can see how underneath the ground, this is showing uh, an image of underneath the ground in a particular place, maybe a place like Texas or Louisiana, you know, those are big oil producing places, you know, maybe it's in Alaska. Uh, the way it works is the oil and gas are trapped underneath the ground. And basically, uh, humans punch these pipes into the ground and suck up the oil and the natural gas. Now, both oil and natural gas come from prehistoric ocean organisms. So oil comes from the forests, petroleum and natural gas come from the ocean organisms. So over very long periods of time, very long periods of time, uh, ocean organisms die. They pile up on the ocean floor. They're buried. Heat and pressure cook and chemically change those ocean, you know, those dead ocean organisms into oil and gas deposits. So, again, it's non renewable because all of this was created a very long time ago from prehistoric, you know, organisms that, you know, uh, we still have organisms in the ocean, but the amount of time it takes to make that oil and natural gas, it's just too long for humans to see we expect it to come back. So once it's used, it's gone. 
Uh, the last is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is considered not renewable because it comes from a rock. So if you remove that, uh, you know, it's usually mined as uranium. Uranium is an element that's found in rocks. And the uranium uh, naturally breaks down over time. The atom splits and releases energy. And that's why it's called nuclear energy, because in the nucleus of the atom, the nucleus breaks apart, uh, you know, naturally. I mean, we, you know, we can force it to happen quicker, you know, that's, that's a little more complicated, but it breaks apart naturally, releases energy, and it's nuclear energy. Now, how all of this works in terms of actually being useful for people is if we look down here where it says chemical energy turned to heat, essentially any time you're going to make electricity, you have to start off, at least when it comes to non-renewable energy, you have to start off with boiling water. So you can burn coal and boil water, you can burn oil, you can burn natural gas. You know, many of you live in homes that burn oil or natural gas to boil water, you know, to have hot water in your house. Uh, or even nuclear energy, you know, the heat released from the nucleus can heat up the water. So the water gets hot, it boils, and that heat, that steam travels up into a turbine. And the spinning action, you know, that pressure from all that boiled water, the pressure causes the turbines to spin. And that spinning action is transferred into a generator. The generator spins as a result of the turbines. It's all kind of connected. And that generator makes electricity. You know, and that's how pretty much all of our electricity is made. You know, if you look at this chart here, you can see coal and gas are huge, huge contributors to how we make electricity uh, in the United States, actually all over the world. See, nuclear is actually quite big as well. Um, oil is not typically used for making electricity, although it can be. All right. And then you can see other types of electricity that's, you know, that's being generated now. Uh, wind, solar, they're much, much smaller biomass. We'll talk about that in the next lesson. All right, that's pretty much it for the video lesson. Um, there'll be some questions after this lesson that you have to answer in a Google form. And that will kind of be our daily format uh, you know, for, yeah, for every day.